that's where this bike excels. So I've talked about almost everything is negative. Yeah, I already know some of you ain't gonna really like this video. Thank you guys for joining me. My name is Howard. Welcome to the Hexshot Rides channel where we talk about everything motorcycles here. Reviews, comparisons, some installs, you know, comparisons between stock parts, aftermarket parts, how those things do. A whole host of things right here on one channel. And if you like what I do, consider subscribing and hit your notifications so you never miss a video from me. Now, I would go ahead and mention Patreon, but I have a feeling, again, some of you are, are really going to probably want to burn me at the stake after I make this video. So I'll mention that a little later in the video if you're still here. The Lowrider ST. So what I really want to touch on today is styling. The 117 motor in this thing, I want to talk about pros and cons. Now, I had a 15 mile ride with this okay so i'm not going to be able to tell you every thing that i like and dislike about this bike but i do have some very strong opinions of it just in this test ride that i did now this was at myrtle beach bike week north myrtle beach harley is the one that had this demo event and so i was able to ride a couple of bikes and this was one of them now i did have the lowrider s for a very short period of time wasn't a huge fan of it as my only bike this one actually checks off more boxes for me if I were to have this as my only bike. And of course, I'm going to tell you my straight up opinion, what I like, what I don't like about this bike. Let's go and get right into it. Let's talk about some of the basic specs first. You basically have a West Coast inspired motorcycle with a frame mounted fairing. You have hard lockable bags. You have a 117 motor, 27 inch seat height, all blacked out bronze wheels so we have a performance style cruiser and if you are into the soft tail line and you want to do some light touring but you want to be able to rip around town as well this could be a good option for you so as opposed to something like the heritage which gives you leather bags a more traditional harley styling this one pretty much breaks the mold and yet you still get a lot of those things that make Harley, Harley Davidson. Now we're just gonna be talking about a stock bike. There's a lot of things that you can change and you probably will if you buy one of these bikes. Just remember, I'm talking about the bike stock. As it sits, you have a five gallon tank and 721 pounds in running order, what seems like a ton lighter than your traditional baggers. Uh, I believe these have a six inch rise to the bars. Uh, you have vents in here, windshield vents here. You have a little deflectors here. You can see your transmission case and all of that. 117 motor. Over here we have cruise control. High beam, low beam horn. You have the inverted front forks and then the uh, single mono shock in the rear. All LEDs all the way around except for the turn signals, which just makes me laugh. I, I don't understand. Those are incandescent. As far as your screen and what you're gonna be looking at, it's a two inch screen that's going to give you your speedometer, tachometer, uh, your gear indicator, fuel level, clock trip range, all that kind of stuff. And then right below that, that's where you have just a, a, a little tiny, not even really a screen, but it gives you a neutral indicator, turn signals, and some other little information. But as far as a ton of information on this bike, that little two inch screen is basically where it's at. And then of course it's keyless ignition and it's going to come with ABS. Now let's go ahead and talk about the styling of the bike. Let me start at the front at this fairing. I actually don't mind the way this fairing looks. I think it looks pretty slick. I think what bothers me the most is just the singular headlight. I'm not opposed to a Cyclops look. I mean, I like the Challenger. It just looks a little awkward, maybe a little too small for the fairing. I think that might be what it is. Other than that, the fairing, whenever you get up to speed, does a really good job of keeping a lot of the wind off your chest. So I imagine if this bike were comfortable for you, you could probably put some miles on this thing and be fairly comfortable. This handles the highway speed so much better than the Lowrider S. I know that's not a, an exactly a fair comparison, but it really does uh, handle it well. I think I'd be riding in sixth gear a lot of the times at high speed because it cuts down on that buzziness quite a bit. 
it acts almost like a road glide fairing, which makes sense because it's frame mounted as well. Uh, so of course it's stationary and you have some vents right there that are very similar to the road glide. Coming back, you have the uh, solo seat, at least this one did, and then you have the pipes on one side, you have the 117 motor, the bronze wheels, the bronze on the secondary valve cover, and those high bags. So Performance Cruiser, when Harley put this thing together, it is obvious that every detail they put in it was aimed at that West Coast styling, and they really did a fantastic job as far as that. The color options on this bike are actually pretty limited compared to some of the other models. This one is the Vivid Black, of course. Now, spoiler alert, the seating position really sucks. I think it's terrible, honestly. And I'm 5'7". I'm not a tall person. And the first thing I noticed once I got my feet on the pegs, they're mid-mounted controls, by the way, is I felt like my knees were super high. I was sitting on the bike obviously, but like, you know, how some bikes, you feel like you're kind of in the bike, you know, and it's, it's comfortable. This one, you feel like you're sitting on top of my back was slightly arched and my hands straight out in front. One of the worst seating positions that I've been in, and I don't remember the lowrider S being like this. So I actually looked at them side by side and the handlebar setup is slightly different. It looks like these handlebars actually come back a little bit further to you which I thought would make this more comfortable. It's a T-bar style setup. I feel like the leverage on the bars is pretty good. You know, some of the T-bars are just, they're too small in my opinion. You have a four inch rise. A different handlebar setup is something I would have to do. Um, and I don't know if they make a forward control option for this bike, but in my opinion, that would make this so much more comfortable. Again, if you're, you know, anywhere over 5'7", I couldn't imagine riding this bike as you just seen you know with your knees up so i don't know i just i really did not like that i can pretty much tell you from right here that this bike would not be for me the way it's set up right now so my knees are bent significantly um it's it's one of the oddest it's one of the oddest seating positions I think I've ever been in. And I've rode most of the Harley lineup to this point now. And it is just weird. I mean, I feel like I'm on top of this thing with my arms stretched out and my, my knees significantly bent and I'm not a tall person. So I couldn't imagine somebody, you know, six foot riding this thing and, and thinking it was comfortable. That soft tail weight and that 117 motor. That's where this bike excels. So I've talked about almost everything is negative. I don't like the seating position. I don't like the bars. I don't really like the fuzziness of the motor. But man, if you want a freaking ripper, this one right here is awesome. That's just like how the Lowrider S was what I like about this more though, is the ability to have storage, the fairing, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna wear yourself out, you know, if you're going on a longer trip or anything like that, right? And, and I think it kind of, I think it looks good. I mean, some people don't like it, you know, with the Cyclops and I, I personally, I like it. It's got good lines to it, good aesthetics. The bags are obviously gonna be a lot smaller than like your your uh, your baggers are but you still get hard locking bags and that's cool that neutral that thing gets kicked into neutral so quickly man but I tell you what, it gets up to speed quick too. 
Yeah, I'd have to make quite a few changes. I do want to talk about who I think this bike is for. Um, but let me tell you what I think the changes are. But one place this bike does shine is in the motor, the power, the torque, and the smoothness. This 117 in the soft tail frame is the way to go. You know, the 114 is really good. The 117 just takes the smoothness of the M8, and it, it's probably the smoothest motor I think Harley makes because you'll notice a little bit of a difference in power from the 114 to the 117. I think from the 107 to the 114, you notice a little bit more. That kind of makes sense, right? But the smoothness from the 114 to the 117 is what I notice the most, and it is a lot of fun in this soft tail frame, man. It just it really does a fantastic job. That's where this bike, in my opinion, really excels. So where it's it's lacking a little bit in the aesthetics, it's definitely lacking uh, in the comfortability for me personally, that motor really does it. Now, I have the same problem with this bike that I had with the S, not as much, because you do get the bags and you get the fairing. To me, though, I am just way more comfortable on baggers, street glide, Rogue Glide, Challenger, Chieftain, to me, they are just a more comfortable motorcycle. And so I think, for me personally, this is an only bike, wouldn't work. This is a secondary bike, would definitely work. This as a bike, if you live in the mountains, if you have any kind of hills, curves, anything like that, if that's something that you're into and you want to be able to rip around and have a bike that feels so much lighter, than your traditional bagger, this could be a good option for you, man. But for me personally, it's just, it's not for me. I'll be honest with you. I would much rather have, as a secondary bike, a Pan America or even a Street Glide. Like, those to me are just more comfortable motorcycles that I like a lot better than this motorcycle. I love the engine. Everything else about it, I'm just okay with in that order. Love the motor, hate the seating position. The aesthetics are pretty good. That's where I'm at with it, man. I'd love to hear your opinion of the Lowrider ST down in the comments below. If you have this motorcycle, dude, this is just my opinion. We're on two wheels. You're still cool with me, dude, and that's, that is what it is, right? I'm just not a huge fan of the Lowrider S and now the Lowrider ST. If you like what I do and you want to support me further, you can do that on Patreon. You can join down below. I'll leave a link, man. We're looking for our first 10 patrons of the channel. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.